For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. This phrase from the Bible, Proverbs 23, 7, in KJV, has often been used to suggest that we have the potential power to manifest positive circumstances in our lives with our own minds. While the concept known as the power of manifestation is the ability to positively create or change our reality into something new and better. Many self-help gurus suggest that through the power of manifestation, your positive thoughts can be materialized into tangible circumstances. Some people even claim that the Bible supports this concept when the Apostle Paul writes, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. In the Philippians 4.8 NIV. Yet, is the power of manifestation truly biblical or sinful? What does the Bible say about someone trying to manifest or create their own reality? Is manifestation a sin? Are there verses in the Bible that support this concept of manifestation? Let's find out. Over a half century ago, in 1952, American pastor Norman Vincent Peale took this idea of manifestation and wrote, The Power of Positive Thinking, a self-help book which describes our ability to positively create our own reality. More recently in the book The Secret, author Rhonda Byrne details how she believes a person can mentally visualize what they desire in order to attract what they want. Byrne believes that the Bible provides us with a three-step process for attaining what we want in life. That is asking, believing, and receiving. In Mark 11:24 in IV, Jesus tells his disciples the exact same thing. He says, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Within this same text, Jesus also says that if you believe and do not doubt, you can move mountains. So does this mean that we can attract and receive personal blessings simply by asking and believing? Or is manifestation considered a sin biblically? Well now, let's look at the three passages I've mentioned in this video closer to determine if the Bible truly supports the ideas of manifesting. Let's begin with Proverbs 23, 7. When interpreting the Bible, the context of a passage is always important. And in this particular passage, verses 6 through 8, explain who and what this person is thinking in their heart. Do not eat the bread of a miser, it says, nor desire his delicacies. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. The morsel you have eaten, you will vomit up and waste your pleasant words. So the context reveals that this is a greedy, stingy, and evil person who says one thing with their mouths but thinks something else in their heart. Therefore, the statement, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he, is actually referring to the fact that, despite what someone says, the real person is revealed in what they think in their hearts. Thus, this passage has nothing to do with manifesting good in your life. Instead, it warns us against misreading someone's words and to examine the true intent of their heart. Now, what about Paul's admonition in Philippians 4.8? It does say that we should think about these things which are noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, or praiseworthy. So is this not a direct claim that by dwelling upon these things that we can attract them to us? Well, actually, no. Again, context is critical in understanding Scripture. And in this passage, that context can be found in verses 4 through 9. In these verses, we are told not to fill our minds with worry because God is near us in each moment and each circumstance. Thus, the message translation says, we can find peace in any situation when we dwell upon the best, not the worst, the beautiful, not the ugly, things to praise, not things to curse. In this case, we are not attracting those things towards us. We are actually attracting ourselves towards those things. In other words, we are focusing our minds upon the good things that are already there in our lives and thanking God for them. Therefore, we are not mysteriously manifesting power, love, or success by thinking about these things. Finally, Mark 11:24 24 
holds the key to whether or not manifestation and attraction are biblical or sinful. After all, Jesus clearly says that if we ask and believe, we will receive. Here the biggest secret most often missed by those who promote the ideas of manifestation and attraction is that God is the one who ultimately gives us anything good we might have in this life. James 1.17 in IV says, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Thus it is indeed sinful to think that we can manifest or create our own good. Let me tell you one thing before I end. James 4.3 NIV clearly states, When you ask, you do not receive, because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Thus prayers or positive thoughts that are self-serving or rooted in greed and selfishness are sinful. The Bible never suggests that we should mentally manifest material or physical blessings upon ourselves. In fact, Mark 11.24 clearly states that we ask for things from God by faith through prayer. Thus, trusting God for those things is more in line with the message of the Bible. Finally, I could find one biblical law of attraction in James 4.8 in IV, in which you will find true blessings. Come near to God and he will come near to you.